I'm going to do it. I need to, I need to just say it. I need to get this off my chest. I have a confession to make internet something that I've been holding deep down in my soul for far too long. My wife has been telling me, Dean, you need to deal with this problem. And for the longest time, I've been like, babe, there's no problem. It's fine. Everything is fine. It's not fine. I have a problem. I have too many theology books. Yes, I said it. It feels good to say it. It might not feel good for you. Maybe that hurt your soul to hear. You love theology books. You clicked on this video probably because you love theology books. And you're like, why? How is that even a thing? How can you have too many theology books? Well, let me tell you, friend, I do. I've had boxes of books that I have hauled from state to state, from country to country as I've done ministry. And I've collected more and more, and it's become a problem. Right now, I probably have upwards of like, I mean, my library's like, it's over a thousand. I'll just say that. It's over a thousand books. And the vast majority are in boxes underneath the stairs right over there. And they've been in those boxes for a couple years. And they probably will be in those boxes for a couple more unless I do something about them. I don't have the space for them. That's my biggest problem. I don't have the space. And maybe you're like me. Maybe you're trying to figure out How do I deal with this library and kind of like trim it? Or maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe you just started your library. Maybe you're just getting into ministry or just beginning to deal with these heavy theological subjects. And so you're building a library and you're wondering how to start or, you know, some guidelines for how to maintain your library. Well, here is what I've learned. I've learned to ask myself three questions And these are the three questions I'm going to be asking myself when it comes to getting rid of the vast majority of my theological library. The first question is, are you going to read this book anytime soon? Like, are you going to read this book this month? If you're looking at Amazon, you got something in your cart, or you're at Barnes & Noble, or maybe even a thrift store, even though it's cheap, you, you need space, right? So maybe you're asking this question at the thrift store and you got a book in your hand and you're wondering, should I buy this book? My question is, are you going to read it this month? Is this a subject that you're going to study right now or going to help you in your current study? Now, if the answer is yes, then yeah, buy it. You aren't going to regret it. This book, Kingdom Through Covenant, a couple years ago, I was really dealing with dispensationalism and covenantalism and I was raised in a dispensational background and and so I bought this book even though it was expensive even though at the time you know it wasn't you know something that like oh I just have a bunch of money lying around I bought this book because I knew it would be helpful and I don't regret buying this book because it helped me now I don't necessarily agree with everything in it so I'm not saying you have to buy that specific book What I'm saying is, even though it was expensive and even though it takes up space, it helped me in a current problem that I had at the time. So that book that you're thinking about buying, or maybe you're looking at and being like, oh, which one of these should I, you know, either sell or give away? Ask yourself, is it going to be something that you're going to read right now? If yes, keep it, buy it. If not, maybe it's time to get rid of that thing. My second question would be, Is it something that you're going to reread? Now, the best bang for your buck is going to be systematic theology books because you're going to bust those out all the time. In ministry, just in life, dealing with topics, you're going to have five or six of those things open and go through a whole bunch of different ones. And that's always like a pretty solid investment. But is it going to be something that you're going to reread? Now, for me, this has been helpful for stuff like Right here, John Bunyan. I love John Bunyan. This is something that I invested in. And honestly, it wasn't super expensive. This is probably one of the cheaper sets that you can get at uh, uh, Banner of Truth. Sorry, blinked on that for a second. (laughs) But uh, one of the cheaper ones. Well, hey, it's been one that I go back to all the time. John Bunyan has written on 
pretty much every subject under the sun. And so whenever I come into, you know, contact with something, I go here and I figure out, you know, did, did Bunyan write something about this? And most of the time I find it really helpful. Now, here's also a little tip for you. Sometimes that book that you think you're going to reread often and go back to and cite and you're going to, you know, get a lot of, you know, just value out of this investment. Sometimes that doesn't work out. And sometimes that's because you didn't read anything about this person before. Here's something. I'm going to say something. You're not going to like it. <laughs> you're, you're probably going to unsubscribe from this channel just because I said this. If you're a reformed person, this is like, I mean, there's heresy. And then like right underneath that is what I'm about to say. Bavink. This is like the I'm a reformed Christian card and it's on every reformed Christian's shelf uh, and people talk about them all the time. I didn't read anything from Bavink. I just assumed because everyone else loved him, I'm going to love him. I'm going to find him really helpful. And so I just bought his reformed dogmatics. I have four volumes of this guy and, you know, sometimes I do get value out of him. So let me, let me be clear. Sometimes I do, but most of the time I find him very confusing. Uh, like I've got Voss's reform dogmatics and that's, that's like my set. Like I, I love that set. Uh, but this reform dogmatics Bavink to me is just not helpful. Now, if you love him, good for you. I'm glad you're getting a lot out of his books. I'm sure I am in like the very small minority, but I bring this up to just say, read something from this person before you invest in them, uh, before you spend that money, before you spend that space that you, you know, only have so much of, well, maybe look into this person and read some other things, look online. You could probably find a smaller book or an essay or something. And you can just kind of tell from a little bit of that, uh, to know maybe you're going to really like it. Maybe you're not like Bunyan. He makes my soul sing. <laughs> like every time I read him, I'm just like, ah, yes, this is great. Every time I read Bovink, I'm like, what did he just say? I have, I have no idea what he just said. And I've been to school guys. I've got a BA, MA, MDiv. I should be able to know what he's saying. And for me, he's just really confusing. So I know I'm in the minority, but I'm just saying, are you going to reuse this? And my last question, and it kind of deals with all of it, is, is it for show? Is it something that you're just buying so it can look pretty on a shelf or maybe give you some kind of status because, you know, you've got, you've got reform dogmatics on your shelf. So you must be a pretty solid theologian yourself. If you're doing it for that reason, just don't buy it. So. Basically, my questions are, is it something you're going to read right now? Is it something you're going to reread in the future? And is it something that you're actually going to read? And if the answer is yes to those, then yeah, get it. Spend the money, use the space. And if not, maybe it's something that you shouldn't have anyways. All right. I know I probably angered some people with that Bob Inc. comment, but have to be real i have to be honest i have to i have to get this confession out okay all right if you like this video like it hit the button if you like content like this subscribe uh maybe maybe you just like me maybe you do i don't know probably not most people don't but if you do subscribe to the channel um reach out to me on instagram on twitter here here's something i want i want in the comments i want your deepest darkest secret who is that theologian that everybody else loves and you're just like i don't get it i don't understand what's what's the big deal about this guy you know you know that they're probably like a godly guy so it's not like character but you just you just don't get value out of him i would like to know for me don't tell my reform friends 